Yeah. No, it's all good. It's all good. Well, cool, man. Well, it's great to meet you. Thank you for taking a minute out. And before we get into your work, I want to know, I know we're all getting tired of talking about COVID, but it was such a big thing yeah. for us to survive this pandemic. How did you survive the pandemic and how did it change the way that you do things now? Oh, man, I, like I, I'm going to you're going to you're going to hate what I have to say about this. Uh, and it's not controversial, not, nothing controversial. Right. right. Um, but um you know, like it, it, it sucked for a minute, right? There was a lot of confusion where uh, we had an executive order, emergency care only or critical care only or urgent care, right? And the executive orders are like a paragraph. Yeah. So there's no explanation. There's like, well, what is, what is urgent care versus what is well care versus, and, and if you look at our services, yeah, we do see some quote unquote urgent patients, but like, we're not like, no, you go to the hospital if you need that kind of care. Yeah. Um, My friend who's a chiropractor, literally a block up the street from me was like, I stayed open. And I went, well, it said urgent care only. She goes, who do, who am I to define what, what somebody's pain is urgent or not? Right. Yeah. And, and I asked her like, well, how many would you see? She goes, sometimes one, sometimes two. I go, I can't flick the lights on for that. You know, yeah. like it, it's just the cost to run the office is more like, so we, we, you know, we, we got our EIDL, we got our PPP, we got all of our, uh, you know, government, uh, and you know, city state, you know, we, I took money from everywhere. Uh, I'm regretting the EIDL loan. Cause I, I like, I could have bought, it's a second mortgage now is essentially what it is, yeah. but it allowed us to update our office and everything. And when we reopened, when that when that was lifted, this is kind of the crazy thing. The first people to come back, I mean, I'm by Johns Hopkins Hospital, University of Maryland. Hopkins has two campuses. There's uh, three Catholic hospitals near us, you know, St. Whatever's. Um, all of the staff, MDs, you know, maintenance people, nurses, they were the ones that came in, right? Yeah. For, for acupuncture. So we treated a lot of them. And it was really like a nice pat on the back where, you know, sometimes you feel like it's us versus them or something like that, but they know what's up. I mean, they're, they, they've read the research. They know that acupuncture can help them, you know, manage stress and recover and keep their immune systems up too. So yeah. they, uh, they made us real busy. I was working six days a week. I let all my staff go. We brought in two new techs and uh, now I got to say, um, this month will be the busiest month we we've, we've ever had patient numbers wise. Wow. And, and, uh, normally a good month is like 300, we're at 16th at 300 in the book for now would be a good month, right? We're probably going to hit around 600. Yeah. Uh, we're at 545 as of this morning before I logged in. Wow. So for us to hit 700, 800, even a thousand appointments this month between all the services we do, it's not all straight acupuncture, but, um, it, it it's going to be a good month. And I think a lot of people are realizing that they need to invest in their health before they're sick. Right. It's, yeah. it's it, well care is not something we're programmed to do. And, you know, I can, I can tear apart uh, the American medical system. Yeah. The people working in it know it doesn't work either, yeah. but um, even in the, even in the places that do have socialized medicine where they're not taking anything out of their pocket, they're still not focusing on diet and exercise and lifestyle and those things. And, and part of it is modern lifestyle. But when people come in for us, I mean, we offer memberships, which is, you know, it sounds more like a gym than anything else, but like, no, come in regularly, get these things done. And then hopefully you're not sick. Hopefully you're sidestepping the bigger issues. Yeah. So since COVID, we really just, we really just blew up. And, you know, I have people asking me if, if, um, they want to invest, you know, like, can we invest in you? And I don't think we're big enough for that just yet. And certainly I, our team is pretty unique. I can't just plop out six of these and expect them to run the same way or feel yeah. the same way. So we're, we're like, I'm not that I don't want to make tons of money, but I really want to control how <laughs> this goes out and, and, you know, make sure that the people that are going to be working there, running there, get the mission and, and they're there for the people. So, yeah. So let's get into the heart and soul of what you do on a daily basis. I'm going to yeah. put you in front of a bunch of grade schoolers, third graders. Yeah. It's career day. And yeah, one yeah. of the kids says, hey, what do you do for a living? Yeah. What's your answer? 
So I, I normally talk about uh, acupuncture in balancing out the body, right? So the idea is that every service we have that we've added, and we have 15 that all in my head sound like East Asian medicine. But what we do is by by treating people, we're, we're hoping to improve circulation. So that's the blood flow through the body, because we know if we get fresh blood to an area, not only are we flushing out tissue that may not be getting good circulation, right? So we have lactic acid that'll build up. We have metabolic waste that'll build up. And I know that's a little bit advanced for, for five-year-olds, but things that are sitting in the tissue that are not supposed to be there, cytokines, when we talk about this uh, inflammatory marker, uh, acupuncture during COVID was being used in China because it breaks up that cytokine storm they were talking about. So reducing that inflammation and then getting fresh oxygen, fresh nutrients in the blood to that tissue. So everything we do hits those functions in a couple of different ways. So we have light that does it. We have heat that does it. We have cold that does it. We uh, have a machine that helps get more oxygen into the li the liquid part of the blood, all with the idea of promoting proper function of the tissue. So, was it always medicine for you in in the very beginning? Was that your was that your focal point? Yeah, you know, I I think I think I came from a family that really valued education. And we had a lot of healthcare workers. My grandfather was a pharmacist and, and I credit him with a, a, a big part of me ending up uh, in acupuncture and East Asian medicine. Um, but it was, you want to help people. You're smart. You should be a doctor. Uh, so I still have cousins. Uh, a couple months ago, one of them said, hey, you know, Einstein School of Medicine is free if you want to go back. And I, I like, I'm not surviving a grand round shift. I'm not on a, Tom is not doing a 12 hour rotation <laughs> in an ER. That's not what I want to do. I'm too old. And not that I'm too old. I think you can do anything whenever you want. I have no desire. I love what I do, but yeah, it, medicine was always something. I didn't know that you could go this route without going through the traditional Western medicine training. When I found that out, um, you know, I was pre-med um, at a school that was associated with an osteopathic school with the idea of like, I'm going to finish my undergrad, go right into the osteopathic school. I'll be a DO, right? Boom. Same thing. Doesn't matter. You're still a doctor. You can still do whatever you want within medicine and specialize. And I received a postcard in the mail from an acupuncture school for an open house. I. Uh, did, did the open house. Two weeks later, I'm enrolled in the program. I had enough credits to like, you know, meet all of the, um, what are the, the prereqs. And then I actually had enough in the biosciences that I had a couple of classes waived on top of that. So here I am skipping my senior year of college to start my master's program, which also gave me a bachelor's in professional health science. So yeah, it was always, it was always healthcare. It was always something in this field. Um, but Western medicine just didn't, didn't feel right. You know, do you think we're ever going to get to a point where we put, like you said in the beginning, the way that we approach healthcare, it's like we put a Band-Aid on a gusher. We don't yeah. go to this preventative stage where we're like, you can do these things to prevent you from getting to a bad point in your life that you can't reverse. Do you think we're going to embrace what you're doing with the future of medicine and get over this whole hang up with it has to be profitable? You know, I, I, I I'm I'm hopeful. Um, but I, I'm not going to say, yes, this is definitely going to happen. Uh, you know, but we're seeing, uh, we're seeing that start to crumble. Right. And even, even Western trained physicians, a lot of them are going into concierge medicine. Now we have an issue with accessibility because I have to pay you out of pocket, but I get you right. And like, I can call you and you'll spend an hour on the phone with me and I'll go, Hey, I'm worried about this real weird disease or i you know i have this family history of this is there something more we can do so it's happening but the accessibility is is not there yet right the expression is the future's already here it's just not evenly distributed right so it, it we're seeing it happen and we're seeing clinics like mine pop up everywhere and even even uh and and my 
my my amazing digital media manager wanted me to reach out about a story. Somebody asked, hey, we're seeing this, you know, the spa and this intersection of spa and medicine. And then they referred to TCM, traditional Chinese medicine and Ayurvedic medicine as like spa therapies. And she goes, I know that pissed you off, right? I was seeing red. I'm like, our field has more studies than physical therapy and chiropractic put together, yet you're still questioning it. Like, you know, we have research in cancer, diabetes, neurological conditions, strokes. We show support in all of these things. And yet you're still treating me like I'm a mud wrap. Yeah. You know, I have a doctorate. I've done more schooling than most other healthcare professionals. So while I'm hopeful, because, you know, in the last two years, I've spoken to medical groups at hospitals, right? Uh, med students. Why? Because we want patients to have better outcomes. Yeah. And we know that exists outside the the brick and mortar Western hospital system. And uh, I'm hopeful because of that. But, you know, we're still running into issues with insurance. We're still running into, the, you know, the same trappings. Well, they won't cover this, but they'll cover the surgery. Well, that's a little backwards because, you know, I charge, you know, the insurance might pay me $100 a treatment. That surgery is going to be $30,000. Yeah. You know, so you could see me every week for a year and we'll maintain you. I'm not saying we're going to cure, but we can get you at a point where you you may not need that surgery. Yeah. Or, you know, and that's, you know, at 100 bucks a pop every week is $5,200. Or you can go get this, you know, $30,000 surgery and you'll go get the MRI first. And you'll go get the imaging. And, you, you know, that keeps totaling that bill up. Yeah. So I, I think if insurance companies were looking at it as cost effectiveness and they've done studies uh, but all these all these wheels turn real slow. Yeah. Um. I I think they would start referring more to us, and they, yeah. you know, like even the book I wrote was like trying to empower people at home. You know, what can you do at home? So hopefully you don't you don't end up breaking it off. You don't end up needing the surgery. You don't end up you, you know needing to rush even to me. Right. I'm taking money out of my own uh, pocket to to say like, look, learn this technique. Use it on yourself, your friends, your family, and, you know, have some sovereignty, I think is the word, over your own health, you know? And and I think that's that's where a lot of my younger patients are, you know? So, you know, my millennials are now in their 40s, and they're starting to see, hey, this is, this is a little messed up from back when I did this, or, you know, I just don't want to end up. You know, and even even me, I, I you know, my family is cursed with longevity and we're pretty healthy, uh, at least physically, mentally, maybe not so much. But, but with it, and I say that lovingly, we got ADHD, nothing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're not hacking people up. <laughs> um, but within that, you know, it, it, we age well, but yeah. not everybody does. So what are those things that we can do to help that process? Because even that, you know, Oh, let's take care of this knee now so it's not getting replaced in 20 years. Absolutely. Um I, I, you know, I so I think that's where the way we put our clinic together, what East Asian medicine offers, what lifestyle medicine offers, right? We have this whole new degree. There's a doctorate in lifestyle medicine which is like, hey, you should be sleeping more. Don't eat that. You know, hey, move your body. You know, and it's like on one hand, it's like we forgot how to be humans. And on the other hand, I, I see the way modern life is that we need somebody to literally go, uh, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe not fried food at every meal. Yeah. You know, I, like, yeah. yeah, I totally get it. Yeah. So who's been a hero for you? Who's been an inspiration? For oh, you? my God. Uh, so first of all, I mentioned my grandfather. Uh You know, I, I have a couple of photos of him sitting like right to the computer. Um it, he he was you know a driving force in getting me here um i remember him counting out pills old school before they had the the machines that would do it right so he's sliding the pills over he puts them in the bottle and he looks at me and he goes um you know these pills are five bucks a piece and this must have been like 92 93 it was definitely before 95 um and he goes these are five bucks a piece this guy is a day laborer 
He's probably making 50, 60 bucks a day. He's going to take three of these a day for the rest of his life. You know, and that 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 is that's a huge expense. So he said, there's got to be a better way. And I, I hope you find it now. He he died, you know, a year or two later. And I had that memory blocked out and I was at Loyola. And I remember sitting there one day in a bio class and that memory came back to me. And I was like, oh, crap. You know, like, first of all, very emotional. I was very close with him, but uh, I got to figure this out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, so what did I do? I, 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 I jumped on a ship that was 5,000 years old. <laughs> <laughs> but within that, uh, the other big influencer was was my mentor, who uh, at a very young age, uh, I believe he left England at like 15, 16. He went to Australia uh, studying martial arts while he was doing roofing, got injured, um, went and got his bone set. Uh, by a traditional bone setter who was also an acupuncturist and a martial artist, and they hit it off. Uh, and then next thing you know, he's in China and Japan studying acupuncture. So he literally brought back so much stuff that most uh, American practitioners don't have access to, right? It's, it's, it hasn't been translated. Um, you know, these amazing systems that are really valid that have been around for hundreds, if not thousands of years. And he he handed them to me. He yeah. said, here you go. Just, you know, learn these, practice it. He was so intense and so dedicated that, you know, I think part of it was I never wanted to let him down. You know, it's like, oh, I got to I got to I remember what he said he had to go through to get this, you know, scrubbing toilets and, you know, cleaning clinics before they'd even take him seriously. And, uh, you know, having to learn two foreign languages. Yeah. Just just to get around. So he he did so much for so many uh i know him because of my dean my he met my dean in japan in 1983 and somehow you know i enrolled in the school and the next semester he goes i want this guy to come in and and teach practical classes um when he died and he died uh post covid uh he was he was uh, a very physically fit person and he had a rough go with COVID. This was before the vaccine was available. He went out to the his home gym the first day he felt better, came inside after working out, uh, looked at his son and said, uh, I don't feel right and fell over dead. So, you know, we think he had some congenital heart issues, but we we also know that he he threw clots there. There's you know, there's a link to some micro clots uh, post COVID. Um, but we had an online funeral, which was super weird for him and, uh, well over a hundred people on from all over the world. Uh, he had, uh, impacts everywhere. Um, a lot of us, uh, you know, I guess I'll call myself an inner gate student with him. Um, we're just trying to teach and share what he did and make sure that we're, you know, living up to his standards, which, uh, we're, we're impossible. Yeah. You know, I, it just, but you know, we're, we're trying to do it for him and, uh, y yeah, I, I mean, it's, uh, it's nice to have that. Uh, yeah. I feel like a lot of people in my field don't, and, uh, they don't tend to do as well. And it's not, it's not that they lack the skill or the knowledge. It's just that I, I don't think they had someone to show them the way. Yeah. So what are you the proudest of, of everything that you've accomplished and evolved into? What are you the proudest of? <sighs> God, man, uh, that's rough because I feel like, you know, you're a jerk if you don't say your family. I, well, I love my kids. I love yeah. my wife. That, uh, but yeah. if we're talking professionally, um, you know, I graduated when I was 24. And at the time, this was like a career change for people. I had no idea what the hell I was doing. Yeah. No idea. Um, and right now, and, and I'm saying this as humbly as I can, we... I, I think we have the biggest single clinic. You know, I have colleagues that have multiple locations. Uh, we have the biggest single clinic in Baltimore, if not Maryland. So we're one of the busiest clinics in the state. You know, uh, one of my quote unquote competitors has three locations. She's brilliant, um, but she's she's managing all of them. She's not in clinic anymore. It's it's it, 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 I can't. I don't even want to know what that circus looks like. 
<laughs> you, you know, yeah. but yeah, you know, for as a single clinic, you know, I mentioned we're doing great with numbers and we're probably going to break all sorts of records this month. Um, and I think it's because even though it's a business and it has to make money, our mission is genuinely to help and have a big impact on people. So my my three acupuncture associates, my three massage therapists, my three front desk technicians, they they all get that, right? That's at the end of the day, it's what's best for the person that's coming in that's standing in front of us. And that's not something I can teach. That's not something I can hire for. And in most cases, these people found us. Like I didn't, yeah, we we put out ads. Um, but the number of people that say, you know, will just shoot us an email and say, Hey, do you have any open positions? I, I think, I think there's a real feel it's tangible when you come into the office. Uh, even my digital media manager that I referenced before, Pam is in Las Vegas, uh, not Las Vegas, Los Angeles. Um, she came out for my book release party. It's the first time I actually met her face to face. And she came into the clinic and uh, like, I, I try not to be too new agey, too wishy-washy. She gets a phone call from a friend of hers in LA who's a psychic. And she goes, I just see you right now in the most positive place in the world. And she goes, oh, I'm at my friend's clinic. <laughs> and she goes, yeah, that's it. And I was like, oh my God, that's, that's weird. Right. You know, random phone call from a friend. Uh, you know, but like she got to see a Saturday morning and the nuttiness that is going on and the people coming and going and saying nice things about the clinic and the and the practitioners. And um, it, it, it it's an honor uh, to be able to do that. And uh, you never want to you never want to drop the ball on that. That's that's constantly making you try to redefine yourself and do it better, you know. Um, but that's that's the thing I'm most proudest, you know, proudest about I, is 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 the fact that I am blessed to be able to do what I I do. So at the end of the day, everyone has a perception of you, family, friends, clients, patients. Yeah. You run the show. What's your perception yeah. of you? Who do you think you are? I you know, I'm I'm. That's a rough one, right? So I, I've, I've done a lot of uh, internal work, a lot of, you know, therapy, a lot of you know, trying shamanistic practices and, you know, just to try and uh, see who I am alone, you know, I, and, and, you, you know, I, I'm just, I'm really genuinely above my goofiness, above my, my jokes, above uh, me just having my own little weird idiosyncrasies. I, I just want to help people. And I, and I hope um, at the end of the day, I've made a positive impact, you know, when I'm done, you know, when, when you go back in the box, yeah. So it, so if anyone wants to reach out, they want to visit your clinic, get the yeah. cupping book, any of the good business in your world, where can they go? I The easiest one is go to my clinic page, charmcityintegrative.com. You know, so Charm City is the moniker for Baltimore. That's nicer. Um, they wouldn't let me use Mobtown. Uh, <laughs> uh, but integrative is what we do. All our services play well together. We're aimed at treating the whole person, which are the two different uh, ways you can take the word integrative. Um, and and we're, we're just trying to uh, take care of people and have a good time. Yeah, I, I feel it. I sense it. Dr. Tom, this has been wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Oh, no I, problem. I'm so glad we connected and best of luck with everything. All right. Thank you so much for having me on. Absolutely.